Hello interweb and welcome to a new series I'm calling Coding Concepts where I discuss code and concepts then walk you through several examples from several use case scenarios in several different coding languages. I am D Quiggs of Deranged Turtle Games and today's concept is State Machines. So what is a state machine you might ask? Well according to Google a state machine is a mathematical model of computation. It is an abstract machine that can be in exactly one of a finite number of states at any given time. And I guess that works, but we're going to simplify that. And for our purposes in this video, we're going to define a state machine as a system that processes one or more inputs and returns or performs exactly one output. But what even uses state machines? Well, that's a good question. State machines are in a wide range of applications, everything from character animations in video games to low level networking control. State machines make things do thing. So what are the pros and cons here? The advantages of implementing a state machine include easier debugging, better code organization, and enhanced code readability. A couple disadvantages may include just overall being more lines of code, as well as higher processing overhead. If you're on something like an Arduino, that might be a problem. In order to build this type of system, we need at least three basic parts. One, we need a container for storing information. Typically, this is going to be one or more variables, perhaps dictionaries and or arrays when available, depending on the language. Two, a method for updating the current state. This would include calling end and initialization processes, which we'll get more into later on. Three, a method for processing the current state. This typically will be called every frame and it will basically just be a method to call a function depending on the current state. But that's enough concept, let's get to the code. First, we're going to go ahead and type up our containers. For this tutorial, I'm just going to make three separate variables. Uh, we're going to do current state, prev state, meaning previous, and new state. Now, previous state, I'm setting this to false. This is a quirk in my coding style. And basically, it's just a bad habit I'm trying to get out of, but I didn't catch myself while recording this. So we're just going to brush on past that. The reason you don't want to use a Boolean there is because you have to compare a string to another string, typically, uh, when we change our states. And if we're comparing a string to a Boolean, the program will crash due to a type error. Next, we're going to write up our update state function. We're first going to compose our method calls and then we're going to want to run a function that checks to see if those methods exist and if so execute them so we want to run the end function for our current state first then we're going to update our state containers afterwards we will go ahead and call our initialization function for the new state all right Next up, we just have to write our process state function. Now we can pass delta to this. It's typically, especially in Godot, this is usually very useful. However, that's not required. What is required, just a simple check to see if we have a method correlating to the current state. And if so, we're gonna call it. Finishing up just real quick, we're gonna go ahead and write up some basic state functions. So here I'm gonna have an init function that just gets called every frame. An init state, this is gonna be confusing, but an init state as well as a running state and a stop state. So what we'll have this do is initialize, change itself to a running state, print it's running like 10 times or something and then go ahead and shut itself down. To finish the final touches on this, we just need to go ahead and put our call to process state within either the underscore process or the underscore physics process functions. Now, which one you decide to put this under depends on performance, but more importantly, if anything you're doing, say you're moving a character around needs collision detection, anything you're doing, if, if your states affect physics within the game or interact with the physics engine 
it is best to use underscore physics underscore process otherwise typically I would just go ahead and use the underscore process now finishing up doing this in Python is very very similar we simply swap out our function that checks to see if we have the method for a Python appropriate implementation as well as move our container variables into the self scope of the Python object. I'm not going to waste the time by typing up all the other stuff, but we'll test this out and bada bang. And that's it for State Machines. If you enjoyed this episode of Coding Concepts, go ahead and smash your computer monitor and then click the subscribe button or like button. I, don't do that in that order. You know what I'm saying. But be sure, but but do smash your computer monitor though. Check out some links in the description, and if you want to commit yourself to the asylum, we'd be happy to see you on Discord. Join the deranged. I have been D Quigs for Deranged Turtle Games, and I'll catch y'all next time.